Welcome back to the Echo Box, formerly known as the Warehouse. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at modifying one of my chairs, well, modifying. It's the C300, the old utility chair. But we're gonna be modifying it or setting it up so that I can use it on a commercial airplane. Or, I don't know why I say that weird. I'm gonna be flying to Indiana for power soccer soon and need to take a power chair on a commercial flight. So, yeah, how do you prepare for that? What do you do for it? Well, everyone's got their own methods, but I'll show you what I'm gonna be doing today. But the reason I picked that chair is because it's not exactly rugged, but I feel like it can bounce around and kind of survive, if that makes any sense. Now, normally when I fly, I use my manual chair. The last time I flew with a power chair was back in 2016 when we went to the Power Soccer World Cup in Florida. Now, back then, I decided I should use the Quantum 6000Z that I had. That thing is kind of built like a tank and it can handle a lot of abuse and whatever. Only problem with that chair is it lacks all the power functions that I need. And even that many years ago, not having a recline and power legs wound up kind of becoming an issue for the week that I was in it. Plus, I don't even know where that chair is right now. It's around somewhere. It needs batteries and still doesn't have the power seating that I need. So I figure this thing is going to be what I'm going to use. I'm not taking my F3 because, well, I don't want it to get destroyed. I, I think we can get this thing set up in a way that will avoid most of the issues. I mean, I always say, how bad can Harbor Freight be? Like, how do you screw up a fuse? How do you screw up a jack stand? But they've managed to screw up both of those things. So anyways, we're gonna take a look at this chair and try and give it the best possible chance of surviving this trip. Hey, it's me from the future or the past. I don't know how that works, but anyways, wanted to mention a couple of things. First off, all we're doing today is exploring the idea of taking apart my chair and kind of strapping everything together. I'm sure there's gonna be something I'll change or do differently, but I just wanted to basically look at the idea and see how this might work as a potential option. Now, as for the Power Soccer Nationals, I just found out that there is going to be 40 teams showing up for the USPSA Power Soccer Nationals in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Now, I got to thinking about that. Every single person that's flying has two power chairs, their daily one and their soccer chair. Now, I'm sure not everyone uses a power chair. There might be some people using manual chairs or whatever, but if we just do some quick math here, um, this is kind of insane. So there's gonna be 40 teams there, and each team will say has an average of five players, and then <laughs> times two for power chairs. That's over 400 power chairs that are going to be flying into Fort Wayne. Now, I don't know how the air carrier, airline systems, whatever, are normally used to power chairs, but this is a big deal. <laughs> there's gonna be 400 or more power chairs flying into this small town all in the course while well, flying in and then back out all within a one week span. So this is actually kind of cool. <laughs> um, hopefully it maybe will show the ground ground crews how to maybe they'll be forced to learn stuff. I don't know. Anyways, I just wanted to break in and say this is very much just a proof of concept that we're working with here. But I want to hear your stories. Put your comments down below of things that you do when you fly or if you have flown or if you flew in your chair was perfectly fine if you flew in your chair was destroyed i want to have a big conversation down below in the comments and hopefully we can reference this video and people can share their their tricks or their tips or whatever they've figured out over over the years um <clears throat> it's like midnight right now and i've been editing this video and just realized i haven't had dinner yet so I'm in the van, I'm gonna go to the 24 hour grocery store because the fridge is empty. So anyways, back to the video. So what we're gonna be working on today is kind of setting this thing up so that it may have a better chance of surviving being in the cargo bay of an airplane. Now there's a number of factors you have to consider when you're gonna be flying with a chair one of which is how tall is it? The cargo bay doors are only so tall, and if the chair is too high, they'll just put it on its side. And that's like 
100% damaged. The other thing also is having the neutral brake levers labeled properly and easily accessible because they need to be able to put the chair in neutral to push it around, especially if you take the joystick off. And what I've done in the past is label everything, put pictures on it, uh, use like bright pink or bright orange duct tape and draw arrows and label everything. So we're gonna have to do something with that because on this chair, when we put the other motors in it, I wound up having to kind of change how the brake release levers work. Right now they are buried way down in here and well, that's not really reasonable for someone working on a, a ramp at an airport to be able to find and use. So we're gonna have to modify those plastics and extend those levers and then I'll put some sort of like colored plastic knob or something on there. The other thing I'd like to do as well is figure out a way to make this joystick removable so I can take it on the plane with me. Right now we have the wide permobile armrests on here and these stick out further than the tires. So that means these are gonna be up against the bulkhead in the plane or other stuff that happens to be in there. I could potentially remove this bolt down here and put in a thumb turn thing. The only problem is right now, by the way, this wire's yellow because uh, we repaired this a long time ago, but the only problem right now is the connections for the joystick and the seating buttons. Well, one of them's here and the other one's inside here. The trick with making a joystick removable is you have to be able to do it without tools because getting that stuff through TSA is kind of a trick. So I'm gonna see if maybe there's a way I can do that. I might just omit the seating switches for this trip. That way you don't have to worry about that. The other thing I wanna to do too, since this chair has cantilevered armrests, I wanna install some brackets so that I can basically fix these in the down position. The other thing too, when they're moving around power chairs and stuff, is they just grab it anywhere and try to pick the thing up. So, you know, they might try to grab it here and lift this and, you know, bend it or something. So I think what I wanna do is put some brackets down here and then also on this rail underneath here. And then I can use some straps to tie these down. One of the nice things with this chair though is we have this direct backrest adapter. So without tools, I can remove this backrest. Here, watch. So I flip that switch, lift the whole thing up, then this just comes off. And my idea is I can basically turn this around, flop it down on the seat like that, and now I'm 100% confident this is below the height requirements to get into the plane. So putting these brackets down here is going to leave us, you know, a few different things we can do. One, strap down the armrest. Oh wait, maybe I could pull the armrests off. I'm pretty sure I could carry some Allen wrenches with me actually. Yeah, if I pull these bolts, I could just pull the armrests off and lay them in here. And then I can use those brackets to run straps over everything. I think that might be what I do here. Then I'll just bring a couple extra bolts in case I lose them, but I can pull those off and then I don't have to worry about the, the wiring and everything or the joystick. Have it all inside here, run a couple straps over everything and then we're good. Can't believe I just thought of that. Yeah, I'm pulling these armrests off. I think that's a great idea. So basically all we need to do is get these brackets installed on the side and then also modify those brake release levers. Okay, cool. I'm feeling a lot better about this now. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, like I don't get, um, oh, what's the word, <laughs> worried about stuff. But the other night as I was trying to fall asleep, I started thinking about flying with this chair and I'm just like, oh man, they're gonna screw this thing up and you know, it's gonna be a whole thing. By the way, I go into Power Soccer Nationals in Indiana, by the way. So it's kind of a multi-stage trip, but anyways, it started getting in my brain and I couldn't sleep, so I had to turn on the TV and watch that for a while. Then today I'm like sitting here eating my lunch and it started getting to me again, so I don't know what it is. I don't, I'm not normally affected by that stuff, but um, yeah, it's uh, definitely a very high risk of your chair being unusable. The other thing I was thinking too is, well, I am going to bring an extra joystick with me in my luggage. Let me get some stuff set up here and I'll show you the plan. Well, I went to one of the usual scumbags and bought some hardware. Be careful with this crinkling plastic. But what we have here is, um, kind of a gate or a drawer handle, <laughs> drawer, 
drawer. What a weird word. Basically one of these things. It's uh, just a handle that has two holes on the end. And the idea that I had was we can just stick it right here on the side rail. And that'll give a nice solid place to attach the straps that we've run over the entire thing. What's the point of a bag that tears up on the top if it doesn't open? Seriously? Then I also got some M6 hex, the M6 hex cap nuts. And these slide into permobile rails like so. And then also grabbed some little matching bolts that go with these and that will allow us to attach these handles to the side of to the side of the chair. Now, I just realized that putting a handle on the side of the chair might make them think they can lift the chair with this. Um, problem is with these chairs, there's a lot of weight with the batteries in the base and if they try to pick it up by the seating, it can damage stuff, but I think it'll be okay. I don't know, I'll have to, do this in some sort of way that they don't look like they should lift them. Anyways, these bolts are slightly larger than the holes. Where'd it go? Come back here. Seriously, where'd it go? The heck? It vanished. Anyways, we're gonna have to drill out these holes so they will fit these bolts. After looking at these now, these aren't super strong looking. They're just kind of like a bent sheet metal, but anyways, we'll see if we can make it work. I can always go back and buy some more beefy versions of these, I guess. I should probably pull this seat belt off of here. Yeah, see this thing is already twisted all out of shape. Eh. Okay, um, problem two, <laughs> these nuts are not going to turn with this handle in here, I think. Uh, I didn't factor in the size of the bolt head and it's interfering with this part of the handle. And then it's also smashing this flat, which kind of, kind of ruins the structural integrity of everything. So I think what we're gonna do is take these back and get some that are a little bit more beefy. I didn't even think about that when I was buying these. I was just trying to save a bit of money. Well, anyways, I'm gonna hop back in my chair and run back over to the hardware store and uh, find something a little more appropriate. <laughs> Version two of these are slightly bigger. They have four holes. I'm guessing these are one inch apart. Huh, look at that, they are. Uh, something, something, I don't know. Let's slide this on and see what happens. You know, I should probably put some washers on there, come to think of it. But yeah, that, that is way better. All right, cool. That will get the job done. Yeah, I'm gonna clean up this mess on the floor here and get the bracket installed on the other side. Oh, I forgot. Uh, while I was at the hardware store, I meant to grab some little pieces of metal so we can modify these levers. Uh, I got so annoyed while I was at the hardware store trying to exchange these stupid things that uh, I forgot about that. All right, handles are installed. I think it's time to give this a dry run. So I just set the seat back here. It's not actually latched in, but let's turn off the chair. The idea is this thing goes in the seat like this. Then we can unhook or unscrew our armrests back here. And this is the older version where you can just remove this bolt and not worry about the inner parts of it or the inner mechanism coming apart. So we'll just pull this little screw out of here, then grab our armrest. We'll just set it on the backrest like so. 
Now, I will be taking these, oh, actually, come to think of it, without that on there, this is gonna be kind of loose and flopping around. So what I should do, actually, is screw that back on with a washer to kind of hold everything in place. So here's a washer. Let's see, I think this should fit on there. Yeah, it does. So we'll put the screws back in, get those tight, and now that'll keep all this stuff from sliding off of there. And same thing here with the other side. We will remove this screw. And luckily on this one, the way the wiring is set up, um, there's plenty of slack to do this. Okay, it's powered off. We can pull our joystick out. And as you can see, there's plenty of wire here. So we can lay this here. Now the joystick does stick out pretty far. Um, let's see if there's another way we can do this. Maybe like that. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, we'll just put the armrest like this. The front of the chair now is protecting the joystick and everything is good there. Let's grab our other washer and put this screw back in. There we go. All right, I've got a couple of these um, friction straps. I'll probably, I should probably get some ratcheting ones. I just happen to have these, but uh, let's see if we can get this attached on here. We'll hook that over there, put this over here. There we go, here's our seat belt. Plug that in, tighten that down. Yeah, I'll have to figure out a good combination of straps and, and um, probably something to put over the joystick. But I think this might work okay. So we've got a, we've got a fairly compact thing here. Tires are sticking out. Now these are air-filled tires. I don't know if the cargo bay is pressurized. So I'm going to let a little bit of air out of those and then I'll have an air pump with me to fill them back up when I get back off of the plane, just in case I do try to overpressurize. Yeah, so these straps are holding down our side guards, cushions under there, seat backs in there. We've got both armrests on the joystick. We've got this washer on here that's gonna prevent all this from sliding off. Here's that metal bracket I was talking about. This isn't a gel seat, so I don't think that should hurt anything. Then got our little handle down here that both of these hook to and seat belt on the back. Sort of threaded the arm bars through the back here on each side. So I think that should kind of hold those in place. Oh, I guess now we have to deal with the neutral levers. But yeah, I think, uh, I think this should work. I'll probably tilt the seat back up just a little bit when I get out of the chair as well. Now we do have some wiring kind of hanging out right here. Uh, I'll probably want to tie that back as well. I think this might be a viable option. Um, I don't know. It's better than just hopping out of it and giving it to him as is, I think. Oh, I just thought also I should probably get a bungee cord or something to tie these up so they don't, you know, flip down because they obviously will. Um, other than that though, I mean, I think it's okay. Could they try and lift the chair from this? Is, are they gonna break off? I mean, I'm lifting as hard as I can and those handles seem pretty sturdy. Well, I'm gonna look around for some pieces of metal and see if we can get to modifying those neutral levers and then we'll have to label those as well. I brought some of the um, vinyl inkjet printer paper so I can make some decals to stick on there and say which way the levers are supposed to go to make it super obvious how to put the thing in neutral. Okay, I've got this uh, Harbor Freight body saw. I could have sworn I'd used it before, but the cord is still wrapped up and everything was in the plastic, so maybe I haven't, I don't know. Let's uh, get a blade put on this and we're just gonna cut an extra slot here in the top to give the lever when we extend it a little bit more room to move back and forth. Okay. 
And while we're here screwing around, I figured there was one other problem we need to solve when it comes to flying. Normally, I have my phone and a holder on the side of my chair and also my keys and everything else. So if I'm not gonna have my chair with me on the plane, where do I put all my stuff? We have a couple different options here, but these are basically um, crossbody or chest, like an admin pouch kind of. I think I inadvertently bought one of each kind, a left-handed and a right-handed. But the idea is, I believe, something like this, maybe adjust it a little bit better. Um, actually, this one seems all right. Yeah. yeah, listen to those, the zippers, they jingle. So we've got a giant slot here on the side, which I didn't see that, that's kind of cool. Um, and then we've got, oh, there's another one here on the top that has sort of a, sort of a little weak magnetic closing thing. Not sure what would fit in there. I don't think that's big enough for my phone. Then another pocket there, another pocket here. Boy, these zippers would drive me insane. Uh, next one, more jingly zippers. So this one's kind of a gray color. It's more of a smooth material. And this one I believe goes like this. Yeah, so actually, I kind of like this one. It's a little more comfortable and low profile. Got a little zipper thing here. Oh, and this one has an inner zipper. There's a zipper inside the zipper. Yeah. Okay, so that's not too bad. Let's see, I'd probably grab that with my left hand. Yeah, so maybe the one going over my right arm would be better. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure this one's fine. It just screams a little more tactical than I'd prefer. I don't know, I'll probably bring them both with me. But anyways, these were fairly inexpensive. I think they were 20 bucks or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, I got these. I'm gonna have to, uh, hang on, I gotta put these down. Luckily this camera has auto horizon leveling. That probably looked weird. Anyways, we got some parts to modify the brake release levers on that chair. So let's go do that before this light melts my face off. All right, went and grabbed a couple of packs of these mending braces, apparently they're called. But they're like, uh, I don't know, eighth inch metal of some sort. I got two different lengths because I couldn't remember. I'm pretty sure these are too long. So these already have a few holes drilled in them, which is handy. And yeah, actually that should work perfectly. So we've already got one hole on the top here. I bought a couple of really, well, four really tiny screws and some nylocks as well. I figure what we'll do here is drill a couple of holes in this tab on the brake lever here. And that will allow us to attach this longer lever. And I think we should be good. Well, anyways, drilling holes is neither here nor there. I'm gonna get this done and then I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you once I get this attached and then we can do it to the other side. Well, that took an inordinate amount of screwing around, but we got it. We have a nice little extension lever on here now. And the holes being slightly offset was actually helpful because it kind of angled the lever up that way. So I think that should work. I'll probably, uh, I don't know, 3D print or wrap the top of that with something, but let's put a cover back on, or at least set it on here and see what that gets us. There we go. There's our existing hole. And yeah, looks like we could trim this a tiny bit more, but yeah, that's going to work fine, I think. Sweet. I figure I should probably clarify simply because I can't expect everyone to watch every video that's published on this channel, but these are not the stock motors in this chair. 
These are from an early F3. These are the six and a half mile an hour motors, and they are quite a bit longer than the C300 motors that are normally in here. Those, uh, they ended maybe right about here or so. The winding section wasn't nearly as long. And there was a giant plastic piece that would slide through. And right here where this hole is, above where it says C300, there was a bar and you would pull that out. And there was a plastic mechanical linkage that went all the way through here and grabbed the existing levers. And you can see the, uh, yeah, I think you can see the hole for it right here. It came through this slot. But as you can see, that no longer lines up. So that's why we're having to deal with all this. And once again, much screwing around later, we have the other side installed now too. Um, let's check our cover clearance. Uh, looks like we could trim a tiny bit more on this one as well. Probably make this slot the same width. I'm pretty sure these things are gonna get bent <laughs> while, um, while this thing's in transit, but yeah, I think we're good. Excellent. And now for the last part of our little thing, I'm going to make, oh, printer's having issue, but I've got some basic logos here that I can put next to each lever. Got them reversed. I've got some labels that say where to lift and that there's two brake release levers. I'm printing them on plain paper right now to kind of figure out the size and where to put these. It's very important to label everything. We should be good. Two brake release levers. Okay, that should go there. The lift here is gonna go right here on this. And then we've got these little arrows here. So yeah, I think we're ready to print this on the vinyl decal paper and cut them out. Oh wait, do I have any scissors here? There's gotta be scissors in this place. Here, scissors, where art thou? Um, oh, that should work. I was just scolded by this printer. I put the page in the rear feed slot and it spit it out and it says, printer is not ready, please wait until instructed before inserting page. <laughs> I find that kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, so we're using this, uh, this stuff here. I'll put a link for it down below, but we used this in a live stream a couple of weeks ago to make some little stickers. But uh, yeah, I think this should work well. This is a photo printer that has pigment-based ink as well as dye-based ink. So with this setting, it should be using the pigment stuff. So we should be getting a very dark black color on the lettering. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, a little bit of smudging, but that's fine. We'll let this dry for a few minutes. Maybe it'd be better to make these in color. Eh, whatever, we'll just do this. Okay, I think we're done for now. I'm gonna have to get some sort of bungee or something to attach the foot plates in the up position. But I've got all the labels on there. We've got the brake release levers extended. And um, yeah, we've got labels here that show to lift there. We've got the little decals that show how to operate the brake levers, uh, lock and unlock. And there's a thing that says two brake releases, one on each side. Little thing here, it says don't use that handle. That's gonna have straps attached to it anyways. I've got some more labels down here. It says lift here and then lift here, one on each side. These are gonna be folded up. Put a little thing on here saying the brake releases are on the side of the chair. Put this little plastic thing back on here. And same thing on this side, we've got our levers and the labels there. Oh, I need to put those zip ties back in. I'm also gonna wrap these in a red electrical tape to kind of make sort of a knob or a handle on there. But we've got our housing cut out now and plenty of room for those to move. Another little note here on the back saying the brake releases are on the side of the chair, so yeah. I think we should be pretty good to go as far as labeling and everything. I'm going to unplug the joystick since that cable is where I can get to it, so. Once I get the back off, armrests all strapped in there and attached, I can just unplug the Arnett cable, that way I won't accidentally turn on. I think that should be good. It'll be as prepared as it can be for bumping around inside a cargo bay of an airplane. 
Eh, it seems to be getting warmer outside or closer to summer or something. Anyways, there you go. We've got this chair, I think, kind of figured out. I'm gonna play around with a few little things and probably make a few little changes. I'm gonna wrap the joystick in sort of, not bubble wrap, but sort of a protective container, if you will. And I don't know, like I said, this was just kind of an exploration of what we could potentially do to help this chair survive. But it's only a four hour flight and I don't know, I my brain is still fried. So anyways, comment down below, share your stories. I, this is one of those things that everyone in a power chair has to deal with and it sucks. There's like no good way to deal with it. And here in the year 2024, that's just cool. A portion of the population just gets their equipment destroyed and deal with it. <laughs> Anyways, um, I will catch you guys. Oh, this is Wednesday. I'll catch you tomorrow on the live stream. Thanks for watching. In Home Depot, just looking around the phone in my hand, holding it proud with them. Disaster.